Noodle here seems to be enjoying a dog's life. But what's going on inside that noodle brain? What's day-to-day -day life like for a dog? Our cover story comes from our resident dog lover, Martha Teichner. At BarkBox, a New York City company that sends out treats and toys to dogs every month by subscription, people can bring their dogs to work. The office is literally crawling with them. And for employees whose dogs are maybe too big or aren't the office type, Piggy. doggy cams are as available as baby monitors. What's great is it has sound so that I can hear when he shifts, or, and he can hear me. I can, like, holler at him, squeak at him. It feels like a way to sort of have a phone conversation. Come here, pig. Video producer Zoe Costello watches her dog live. It's a comfort. It makes me feel good to see him, to see that he's OK, alone. Right now, you're looking at my dog, Monty. Company controller Matt Hagel is another shameless voyeur. Sometimes I'll communicate through it to yell at him if he's doing something bad. And does he respond? Uh, yeah, he can hear me. So if you say no, he'll get it? He'll get it. He may not listen. So normally, right when we leave, he'll, I think he gets upset. But then after that, he'll just sleep. Uh, we leave music on for him, so he likes reggae music. But the sleep part, that's what most dogs do when they're home alone. The average dog sleeps 12 to 14 hours a day. It's nothing like the secret life of pets. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> the film managed to gross nearly a billion dollars and was one of the summer's biggest blockbusters. You be a good boy, Leonard. The point of the movie is that the pets' lives start the minute we leave. <laughs> is that or is not that not true? I feel like it's the reverse. Research scientist Alexandra Horowitz studies dog cognition. Her new book is Being a Dog, published by Scribner, a subsidiary of CBS. They are our social companions. We've bred them to be so. And their existence really revolves around our presence and interaction with us. And that's exactly what they don't have when we leave them. Pets do have a secret life, though. For dogs, it's not so much about this as it is about this. They experience the world mainly through their noses. The dog's nose is masterful. Uh, it's uh, such an impressive organ. Humans have about six million olfactory receptors. Dogs have 300 million. They sniff more and they sniff more rapidly than we do. And that's because they need to get the odors from the outside world all the way up to the epithelial tissue, the cells that do the smelling. And that's really at the back of the nose. They exhale through those little curled slits on the sides of their noses. And listen to this. There is some research which shows that dogs use their right and left nostrils differently. So they start out sniffing with the right and then move to the left. And so there's a kind of stereo olfaction. We gathered a few dogs, Alexandra Horowitz's dog Finnegan, Ricky, and June, my dog Minnie, oh. to see some noses in action. A pretty classic greeting ritual. How does a, a dog know from smelling whether the dog they're meeting is a friend or an enemy? I don't think there's anything inherently friend or foe about a smell. Maybe younger or older, healthier or less healthy, sick or recently eaten some things. Can they smell fear? Can they smell love? Yeah, I don't think it's fan too fantastic to say that in some way they can smell fear, in some way they smell love. And that's because we're giving off odors that correspond to a state of fear or feeling of affection. We know about tracking dogs bomb-sniffing dogs, even bedbug-finding dogs, and now this. There are now a lot of ex working dogs who are being trained to detect cancers, cancers in urine, on breath, and exhaled breath on the body. And would you believe dogs can also smell time? If I leave the house in the morning, my house is full of my smell. 
an hour later, a lot of it will have disappeared. So knowing what the room smells like after an eight-hour day. Yeah, a lot of people talk about um, dogs who seem to know when their owners are coming home, and they think it might be a kind of psychic ability, but I think it's a smelling ability, essentially, and not smelling their approach, but smelling how long somebody is gone. Cute, but one not-so-cute side effect of smelling time can be separation anxiety. When dogs go crazy and destroy things when their owners leave. It's a very big thing. It's like 15 to 17 percent of the nation's 73 million dogs have overt, you know, obvious separation anxiety. Dr. Nicholas Dodman, recently retired as director of the Animal Behavior Program at Tufts University's Veterinary School. His new book, Pets on the Couch, is published by CBS's Simon & Schuster. What a beautiful looking dog. Shadow was returned to a shelter twice before Maya Haraseko adopted him eight months ago. He removed the wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, just completely demolished the room. And, you know, he was breaking air conditioners, breaking window screens, just trying to get out, barking. Dr. Dodman on a house call to Harris Aker's Cambridge, Massachusetts apartment in August. We're going to kind of get him to expect that when the door closes, wonderful things happen. Can you just hold him with the collar and slip out? His advice to Maya, leave as if it's no big deal, but provide Shadow entertainment. Keep him busy and not bored while she's out. And when she comes back... The greeting's low-key. You could say, hey, Shadow, how's it going? Slap me for. And in Shadow's case... I think also we probably need some kind of medicine, something like, you know, for example, Zoloft. Dr. Dodman has spent decades advocating using human mood-stabilizing drugs like Zoloft, Prozac, and others on pets because people and animals share the same disorders. The list would include aggression, phobias, PTSD, obsessive compulsive disorder, autism, uh, in one model, Tourette's syndrome. Alzheimer's? Oh, Alzheimer's too. For separation anxiety, he prescribes behavior modification first, drugs as a last resort. Sometimes people are emotionally exhausted, they're financially drained, and they say, if you can't fix this problem within two or three months, we're going to take him to the pound or we'll have the vet put him to sleep. When I hear that, I say, let's use the medication. Good news about Shadow. After three months following Dr. Dodman's prescription, he can be left alone for at least four hours without destroying anything. A secret life tamer than it used to be, but a lot happier for all concerned.